Hello everyone, my name is Arthur Cyan. Everybody calls me Art. I come from a background of being a generalist, um, as well as a lighter. Um, I've worked at places like Blurry Studios, Digital Domain, Industrial Light and Magic. Um, I've done tons of environments, uh, tons of shots, lighting, but today I really want to just get in the hang of learning Blender. Um, you know, I come from 3D Studio Max and Maya, but uh, the Blender community has been pumping out a lot of cool stuff. So I'm, I'm pretty intrigued about it. So I, I think the best way to uh, learn something is to just dive right in, you know, sink or swim. Um, so I found this cool image of uh, an environment from Star Wars Mandalorian season two. I don't know what episode, to be honest. Uh, and I thought I'd try and, you know, re recreate it, um, both modeling-wise, as well as uh, lighting and look dev wise uh, So let's dive in. I'm going to move this over. By the way, I'm, I'm using this tool called Pure Ref, which is uh, super handy. Uh, it lets you go into mode, uh, always on top. So, you know, you could always have it up um, while you're still working. All right, so I've got some kit parts I've prepared uh, from my asset library. Um, a lot of cool sci-fi panels and stuff like that. So I, I don't plan on doing this one-to-one -one and matching exactly what they've done, but more or less it's going to look the same. Uh, so let's just start off with a plane, of course. By the way, I am using a tool or an add-on called uh, BS Max for Blender. And like I said, because I come from a uh, 3D Studio Max background, it's just going to be a lot easier for me to, um, you know, uh, work with the Max workflow while I while I get a you know get the hang of things on how Blender works. So with that said, um, let me just grab a. One of the simpler pieces and start blocking some stuff out. So to clone that, right click clone uh, instance. I don't want to waste poly, so I'll just instance that. That did not work. Clone instance, okay. Do I need to do OK here somewhere? I'm not sure. Let's try Enter. OK. There we go. Uh, let's bring this over. Rotate 180 degrees on the Z axis. Let's zoom in. And let me do another clone of this. Stop, set that. Uh, just to fill in this gap because I want to start with this pillar really it's going to, going to be pretty uh, integral to building this out so right click create just hit X plane that's fine I'm uh, going to convert to editable mesh. I'm just going to raise this up a little bit. And uh, I want to start by figuring out how far this this angle should be, how far this should go out. And so um, I'll just go into edge mode, hit 2 to go into edge mode. And uh, like I said, those hotkeys are actually <laughs> from BS Max. Uh, so that's probably not what you're going to get if you're just using the uh, Blender version. Um, right click. Extrude and hold down the Z. Right. That's fine. Grab this edge right here. Move this up a little bit. Um, feels all right to me. Move this in. Convert text mode. Push this out a little bit from that wall. We'll, we'll definitely adjust that later. Um, Let's see, let's grab these edges and start extruding some of this stuff out. So, okay. 
We'll pull that back in what axis? X? No. Y? Yeah. Y axis. I'm going to pull that all the way up um, as well as scale it. I'm not sure if there's a. Uh, way to do it like I do it in max. Let me, let me try a, a zero here. Yeah, that should do a flatten it out. Okay. Um, I'm going to select this edge, hit Alt R to ring my selection. Uh, or better yet, we'll just go right here to this tool, loop, cut, click, great. Um, and then a uh, chamfer. Let's see if there's a chamfer, chamfer here. Uh, I'm sure it's somewhere, so <clears throat> so instead I'll just open it up from here. Click, drag, um, you want three segments. Didn't work. Uh, one more time. Chamfer. Just drag, I suppose. And then we'll adjust it after the fact. Three segments. Um, with actually I guess we want two segments. Narrow that out. Uh, I'm basically going to block this end. Yeah, that's fine. And I'll select this edge loop, double click, uh, shift, and just chamfer that one more time. Maybe a little less. That's fine. That looks good. Okay. All right. Uh, select these faces and extrude inward. That's about good. Um, also, obviously, there is an issue right here, so let's just delete those polygons down there. And I'm sure it's going to be up here, so. Delete. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's do this as well. I think there's a back facing issue. One, two, one, two, delete. Okay. Um, that's fine for now. Blocking purposes. Actually, um, just to help me see things more clearly, I'm also going to throw a um, bevel modifier uh, just so we can see it a little more easily um, in the viewport. So if I go to the uh, modifiers, section here probably want to go a little less 0 0.025 and uh it's like three segments there we go so um yeah actually we'll go to six and then we'll reduce later it's a lot easier for you to see the shapes this way rather than just flat faces uh okay let's see that's fine um what I'd like to do is set up a camera, just eyeball something. Uh, but first, let me clone this. Come over here. Great. Come back, do it again. And we'll do one back here. Okay. Um, just want to make sure my scene resolution is cool great uh, and i will create a uh, camera from the view so camera create camera from view um, zoom in here that's cool and uh, i believe there's a way to lock it so we can move in our viewport and the camera will go you know follow along with it so let's try that view camera to 
new break. <clears throat> uh, maybe I'm just gonna pan and rotate. It's something for now. Something as a foundation we can build off of. Okay, uh, that's cool. And I'm gonna uncheck that now, just so I don't bust it later. So when I hit C, I can jump to the camera. I'll hit P, um, B, and then E. Go to perspective or for graphic. Right. I'm trying to understand why the P hotkey is not working anymore. Okay, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Remember, this is a add-on, uh, and I'm still just really on like day three of Blender, so sorry for fumbling and tumbling. Um, but okay, let me just grab a. Uh, Bring this up a little bit. Okay. Eyeball it in the place. Go to top view, actually. And I'm sure there are uh, easier ways of doing this by snapping and whatnot, but like I said, I'm just not there yet in terms of having uh, knowledge of all the Blender hotkeys. But Let's grab another sort of panel, mix things up, spice it up. Um, this is cool. So we're going to clone that over a couple of times. We'll just do it now. And the Y axis. So I can easily pick it out. Maybe. There we go. that over, rotate, I'm not sure if there's a snapping hotkey, but I'll just fix it here, 180, no, okay, oh, that is definitely not the best way to go about it, <laughs> but I'm just doing what I can with Blender, limited Blender knowledge for now, bring this out over here, and as I change my mind, I'll delete these guys and just clone from the one actually brought over here. And you know what's what's interesting about like modeling these environments is you, even though you're gonna have a flat wall, you want to do your best to kind of get more depth, you know, and and uh, distance between objects, which is also why I kind of wanted to go with this one. You can see there's like a front section there's a mid section another mid section with the tubes and then the back section uh, so let me just read this up a little bit and i'm thinking it would be kind of cool to get some sort of pipes in here Yeah, these two should be cool. Just make the selection properly. And I'm going to hit um, Control J to join this. Turn it into an object. Okay. Uh, control C, copy, Control V, paste, and then we'll move it into place. Some more room up here. Let's bring that here. Kind of put it up somewhere in the middle. I think I'm just going to scale it up a little bit. Yeah. Let's go. We'll go more. Give it a front view. And uh, I'll 
I'll just take these little seeds here and extend this out. Just bash this in right here. Oh, we need back facing. So X ray, select. Uh, and I'll go back in and disable that. Okay. Top level. That feels fine. Feels cool. Um, let's see. What else can we do here? Maybe. Let's see what else we can jam in here. There's some cool stuff going on here. Let's see if we can steal some of that. Let's see, copy, control C, uh, control V, paste. Actually, I'm curious about trying this snap feature. So if I right click uh, with the snap, you can say, I don't know if that's not it. Uh, maybe it's the line feature. Yeah, let's try that. So select this, control click here, right click, align objects. I guess I can only do that to one. One more time, right click, align, select that object. There we go. Great. Um, let's just hit OK and rotate after the fact. So 180 degrees. Great. Uh, zoom in. Yeah, pull that down, and it's you know, but like I said, this is going to help with adding some depth, especially once you uh, start to introduce uh, volumetrics. It is going to help a lot. So just get that in there. Yeah, that feels really good. Matter of fact, and maybe rotate it like so another layer of depth, why not? Um, and this is fine. Pretty happy with that. We'll just take all this and clone it over. So, clone, uh, what is that, the X axis. And I have a feeling things are not gonna go well. Oh, no, that did all right. Just gonna eyeball it. Now, two, Hit OK. Great. This one as well. So, clone one offset. OK. All right, cool. Um, let me just save this file. Probably should have done that a long time ago, but that's OK. Uh, I want to raise these verts at this point. I believe I need to have X ray on, so it grabs the back facing. Let's just go up all the way for a second. Um, I'm going to go to the top level. Hit C. That's looking cool already. Just kind of um, want to explore this reference uh, for a second. There's obviously a lot of uh, great detail we can add, um, you know, uh, but I'm not looking to really build out a full on environment. I'm just Looking to experiment and uh, you know um, see what kind of cool stuff I can do. So let's just keep extending this wall. There's obviously um, what do I want to say? Uh, a lot of unique stuff you can do. Like you can decide to change a section and do something else over here um, to break up the you know monotony and the evenness of everything. Uh, but we won't we won't do too much of that for this video. But I will replace that one. Um, and then just switch it up. Let's just throw something else back there. Who knows? That's pretty cool. Um, so we'll see copy, control, V, paste, move that over. Rotate 180. Oh, undo. That was a move. Rotate. 
180 degrees. And uh, let's throw this back here. See what we get. In particular, uh, you know, just because we're just working on the still image, uh, I'm more concerned with making it look cool from this camera angle. Um, that's pretty, pretty epic, actually. Wow. Let's do this. Let's. I feel like that's going to be too staggered going back, back, back. Maybe if it were up here instead. And we took this guy and decided to change this up. This is nice because like now this middle area is uh, a variation as well. So let's do that and bring this back down. Let's see what this is. That's pretty cool. Um, now we'll take these two. Actually, from the bottom, we'll just duplicate up. One, two, three, no, not you. Three, four, five, six. Uh, clone. Just one on the Z space. So let's bring that up. Great. Uh, so some of these are sticking out. Let's see what we can do about that. that tube. You know, actually, that would be pretty cool if we had some uh, effect sims, like there's smoke coming out of this vent over here. So we'll just leave that there. That's already a pretty great looking wall. Uh, let's, let's throw something on the ground. It'll look interesting. So now I have some pieces I kind of prepared. Um, you know, kit bash them together, mash them together. So let's try with, going with this ground element here. Uh, going to copy object, paste object. Uh, looks like we need to raise a little bit. Right. And I want to keep this really tight to the ground. So I actually prefer these intersections. Um, yeah, let's do that. And rotate 180 degrees. Let's put this up over here. Obviously, we can be perfect about it and snap all these lines together so there wouldn't be any gaps or any holes. Like I said, uh, we're not trying to be not in this case. Um, so let's do a clone from here on the X axis. And let's go with like six. Let's see. Actually, let me zoom out just to be sure. Five. X. Put that up. I'm sure there's a little bit of overlap there, but I'm okay with that. Uh, let's grab this whole lineup and select the plane. Okay, uh, one, two, three. All right, and let's do another clone to get the opposite half. That would be the y-axis. And instead I want to mirror it you know, because there are some bulky parts over there where nobody can really walk on. You know, wouldn't be very safe for the Star Wars universe. Uh, so let's do that. Clone. Mirror. Y. Nope. Not rotate. Ah. Uh, fumbling. Why move? Something. I feel like it didn't keep the pivot. Let's do this instead. Clone. 
and we'll just rotate and then move it. Clone. One more time. Okay. Is this like overlapped or what is going on? Sorry. Yeah, it's overlapped. I'm gonna undo. See, see what happened here. Okay. Just want to make sure I don't. I'm not doubled up, which I am. So at some point I did a clone and did not pay attention to it. Let's go back again, undo, let's go back there again, undo, I think that's probably as far back as we need to go, yeah, so one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, just to be sure. All right, now I'm going to do a copy and paste. And obviously for poly counts, I should probably be instancing this, but as we saw, I'm kind of fumbling right now. So I'll just do it this way instead. 180 degrees, and we'll move this over. And I don't, I don't like that gap too much. I don't mind a little bit, but that's a bit much. So I'm going to do a little overlap over here. Great. And let's just grab all these guys and slide it down to the camera. Towards the camera. And then to say, undo, select, slide. And I'm going to slide the ground. All right. Let's go back to the camera. Ah, so not enough coverage. Still need some more. I probably. Should have paid attention to where the actual camera icon is. Let's do this. I'm actually at this point curious. If we scale up. How does this feel? That's pretty cool. Um, but it is definitely not helping our scale with these bulky items standing out. Not to mention our ground is like super low, uh, low angle, so we might rotate that. So let me undo that scale for a second. Uh, let's let's lock our camera and rotate up a bit because it, it would be unfortunate to not get all this cool stuff over here. Um, and since we're here, we might as well dial in this um, the lens size over here. Go much wider. Make it feel epic. Who would that be? Data. Do I even have my camera selected? That is the question. Select view cameras. Select camera. Well, it's got to be here somewhere. I'm gonna hit F. I don't think I do have it selected. Let's do this. Asterisk camera. And then I'll click that. There we go. Uh, like I said, I'm still learning. Let's try a 20 millimeter. It's pretty wide. It's 30. That feels good. Fish. And uh, let's zoom in. And that's pretty cool. Let's just stick with this for now. See what we get a little later. Uh, let me save this file. Let's take these three uh, hero pillars and move them out a little bit. I will say that I really don't like the sharp cut, so we'll probably do a um, kind of like a little bevel over here, round it off a bit. But that all feels great. Okay, so I actually um, ended up deleting that bevel, and we'll pick it up from there. Alt Q. Select this edge loop right here and chamfer it. Let's uh, add a few segments, round that off a bit, pick up some nice highlights. Cool. 
And to make the modeling easier, I guess I'm going to figure out how to do this mirror. So just up over here, faces. And honestly, I thought this would select the whole thing. I don't know why it's not. Uh, interesting. I'll do control page up. Top level. X mirror. Cool. Um, I want to get this same edge flow over here. So let me see if I'll get lucky. Try the loop cut. I have a feeling it's going to average it, yeah, to that way. So I don't want so delete these faces. Ah, and now it's selecting the whole thing. Um, select delete. Take this edge loop, extrude on um, Y. I think I have my snap on. Let me turn it off. Um, okay. Just want to see how far out I should go over here. Keep that up. Keep it a little thin. So that's one. This is, by the way, obviously not how I do this in 3D Max, but uh, I'm just using whatever I can right now to make this happen. So do one more. Y. I think we take, <clears throat> we can take that all the way. Uh, scale. Zero that out, flatten it, okay. Um, let's take these faces, double click to bring the selection and uh, extrude inward. You can see the axis, not too far in, just want to get a little bit of highlight. So one, this I think I could hold shift to get better. There you go. Okay. So that bottom face and delete it. Okay. Delete. Cool. Uh, let's let's start doing this this light right here. There's this feature which in 3D Max it's called Auto Grid, but I guess here you only have just a select few options to do that with if you go click and hold. All right. Exit, uh, convert to editable poly, take this face, bring it in a little bit. Um, go to edges, alt R, ring, chamfer. Let's round that out, go a little wider, like so, a few more, ah, that's cool, uh, go to face, inset, uh, 
that's cool. Um, let's extrude in on the X axis. So extrude, hold X. That's about deep enough. I want to go. Um, and because I don't know how to do this, I'm just going to uh, copy this object to the top level. Uh, Control C, copy, Control C, paste, isolation mode. Uh, I'm going to select this face and invert, delete that. And then, I don't know, maybe this will be like some sort of glass piece over here. Uh, so, let's give that some thickness. Uh, Alt Q, X, I believe it's called solidify. So, add that. Yeah, and then hold shift and no, not even shift zero one. I want to go a little thinner than that, so one zero zero four. That's cool. Okay, uh, alt Q. What happens if I hide that? I want to go deeper back there so I can place some sort of light over here. Let's go back to the face, push that in more. Uh, and then push this in just a bit. Let's throw a bevel on this. Oops. Oh, I'm lost. Upside down, round and round. Okay. All right, we're back. Select that object, X, bevel, add uh, 0 0.02. Did not see that. It's 0 0 0.002. There you go. 0 0.004. That's all right. Uh, give me some segments. And let's take these two and um, get a few, few of those going up there. Actually, let me check that out from the camera. I have a feeling I want that to be a little taller. Can we edit both of these at once? I have a feeling you can't. Strange. Okay, this must be that back face thing. X ray select. All right, now we're talking. Camera. Let's go even more. Like that. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to clone that up because I have a feeling where we might do like a material IDs or something like that. So clone. Six on the Z axis, I believe. I don't like how repetitive it is. There's too many over here. I like a little bit of gap, so I think I think I'm okay with that. Um, let's go back and select this guy and copy object, paste object, select this as well, go into isolation, uh, <clears throat> left view, and get the one down here. I'm probably not going to get a, a perfect match of the uh, angle, but I think this will do fine. I don't like how tight it is in here, but it should be fine for now. Okay, now that we've got that, let's uh, go into, let's copy those over. Again, this is probably not the order of operations I would go with if I were doing this in 3D Max or Maya, but I am just winging this, so 
bear with me. There's definitely better practices for modeling stuff like this. Uh, clone and X axis. Let's take that from there. Let's position that into place. Like that. Subtract selection. Oh, I don't even have the updated mesh over here. Delete. Let's do that clone. X. Ballpark that position right there. Add it. That is fish. One more time for this end cap right here. And let's get some light pieces. I probably should have put this in a collection or something, honestly, to uh, select it a little easier. Shift, no, you know, just click and drag, I guess. Okay. All right, we're back. I need to change the selection mode. Um, looks like I lost something over there. Oh boy. All right, let's do this. Delete. 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 Let's select this all again. From selection. And this time, <clears throat> create a new collection. Call collection file. Let me just plug it in for now and then rename it. So, object collection move to collection five. And call this pillar. So, let's do that. Uh, select all objects, clone this. Axis Okay, that's cool. Um, deselect, let's do it one more time. Clone this time over here. Okay, deselect. Bring that over. Okay. Um, here we go. That's shaping up to look like something. Uh, control S C. Um, and let's add a bevel. And bring this down to like two. Six segments, right? Let's see what we get. Jacob the devil over here. That's so odd. I thought I cloned that. You know? That's frustrating. That's, that's the whole point of cloning is so you keep it live. Fine. We'll get back to that. Fuck it. Um, all right. I'm okay with that, how everything's looking. So, let's do this one more time. Delete, uh, actually, let's select all of this. No, let's do this. Select 
all of this. And uh, hold that down one more time. Okay. Go back to a camera. That's cool. That's fine. Um, let me extend this ground a bit. And while we're at it, I'll put that in a new collection. See, this is just strange to me. I just hit Control Select previously, and it removed it. This time, it's not working. I don't get it. Sorry, Blender. You are killing me. Let's bring this out. Just get. See how that looks. That looks better. That's fine. All right, uh, let me add this to collection four. <clears throat> so grab that a little more easily next time. No, object, collection, uh, move, collection four, rename, round. Okay, All right, we got that. So I actually have a uh, another asset in the scene that I prepared. Uh, it's like this matrix ship um, damaged. Where is that guy? Oh, maybe I don't have it in the scene. Okay, we'll just import it. I think it was an FBX. Nice, teeny tiny. All right, let's just scale up. Rotate. Ninety, and uh, let me center this pivot. So you go to object, set origin, center of mass to surface. Okay. And let's just eyeball all this in the camera. There's this cool ship thingy over here, so might as well. Nice. Get something cool going on. And because it's damaged, just bash it in, bash it in. All right, that's cool. Let me put that in a collection. I'm trying to get in the habit of the collection stuff. What is that one called? Just collection. Rename that. Oh, shit. All right. Now, I have a feeling <laughs> all the materials are busted and did not come through correctly. So let's start doing some shaders. Uh, up here is the viewport shading. There's a like uh, more detailed viewport shading, IPR kind of thing over here like a rendered preview version that's pretty cool all gray uh so you could i believe um uh, there's supposed to be a drop down here somewhere here you go let's change this to um something random go back Scene lights, scene world. There we go. Uh, so I've got some different HDRs here. A bunch of them are actually from Substance. I brought them in because I like to 
have the same um, HDRs that I use in Substance for characters or environments and bring them into my 3D scene as well. So it's just easier for me to get a one-to-one -one confirmation. But uh, this is cool for now. Looks like I have some sort of metallic material here. So if we go down to material, I have this thing called a temp metal, uh, which has, you know, like a dark diffuse base, um, metallic. I like to keep it at like 0.5 for these sci-fi type of stuff. Uh, and then I like to have a clear coat and get some semi-glossies as well at a 0.2 roughness so that's looking pretty cool what happens if we apply that same material over here so type in temp metal nice let's uh let's start just fooling around a little bit with shaders because this is taking too long already limited knowledge of Blender. Let's try a temp 01 and uh, maybe give this a slightly different diffuse color, get some variation, make this even more metallic, pipe-ish. Um, let's do another temp here. One over here. That's looking pretty cool. Um, let's grab this guy. Let's do another shader. Temp, 06, whatever, something random. And this one will change up. We'll go lighter with this as well. And maybe make this uh, less metallic but still have a cool clear coat. Turn off wireframe, control S. See, those are, those are the highlights I was talking about when you get some nice bevels, which I feel like we're missing over here. Yeah, we totally don't have that here. Ugh, blender. All right, bevel. Modifier. 0 0.025. Six seconds. Same over here. Bevel. 0 0.025. Six segments. And one more time. Bevel. One zero two five six. Let's go back to the camera. Um, I want to duplicate this over one more time. Clone X. Looks like I got a gap over there. Um, X. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, control less, save. Let's go back over here. See what we get in our previewer, which I believe I have the render set to, yeah, my GPU uh, with cycle. This actually looks kind of cool, right? The whole black and white look, uh, but that is not what we want. So let's see if we could figure out which is which. Uh, this is tough. <clears throat> Base. Um, 
like that whole weird x-ray thing driving me crazy okay I'm trying to figure out how do you know which material that's connected to nice so you can click over here and it updates over here so metal 12 and I also wonder is there a way to select all the faces connected to this material within this object? I'm sure there is. Select. Yeah. We got finally something intuitive. Okay. Let's get out of object mode. Go back to camera. Metal 12. Uh, let's just keep working with that temp, but switch it up. a little dimmer more metallic more rough um same here let's just mess around on the fly Get some random colors going or more Keep it dark. That's cool. I like that little variation in uh in the blacks. Okay, that's fine for now. What's this guy? <clears throat> It's a lot of materials. Metal 16. Give it a little bit of a color. Fuck it, why not? Darkish. Metallic. Fully spec. Let's give it some coat. <clears throat> some roughness. Let's see what this material is right here. Metal 4. Okay. Let's get that a different color. Why not? Metallic. Sure. Really specular. That's fine. Actually, that would be kind of cool to be a uh, emissive. So let's do that. Um, next, select that yellow color. Um, strength, we'll pump that out. Nice. Nice. A little bit of highlight there. <clears throat> so this is already looking pretty cool. Let's see. What else? Which faces are these cables? Let's give some sort of color there as well. And make that emissive. So why not, right? Let's some self illumination. That's cool. Uh, strength. And, oh, yeah. We might end up with something even cooler than this. All right. Uh, what else we got? Face. Yeah, I'm going to get the right face uh, right there. Okay, so those are my uh, yellow ones. Okay. Okay with that. What's this over here? Metal 06, if you say so. Let's make that like kind of nice and highlight ish. Get a little bit of coat. Uh, what else are we missing? That's that for there. And as you can tell, 
I think a lot of these materials uh, from the stuff I imported were already instanced, so they should be applying to other objects as well. Uh, let's let's see what this is. Let's make that some sort of light source again. Bluish this time. Ignition. Select that blue. Build with ten. What's this one? This is LED03. What was that? <clears throat> the select faces again. Uh, hmm. Select. I think we should be able to assign it from here. So LED03 underscore four. Okay, LED03 underscore underscore four point oh oh one. I know these names, right? Okay, that's pretty cool. It's already looking pretty sweet. Let's do something about this ground. Boy, what is this selecting? I don't know what it's doing. Ground. Yeah, it's. I don't know what this is doing, man. Come on. Ground. What is that called? Temp metal. We'll go with six. Did that even apply? No. Six. There we go. Temp metal. A random one, why not? Let's go back to the camera. That's looking pretty cool. Save. Let's uh let's throw a light. Probably literally just one light will do it. X light area. I, I, don't, I don't understand this gizmo stuff. Let's just move the light. Move. Target towards the camera. Never hurts. Uh, switch this to global. That's pretty low. That might be cool. Let's do uh, 1,000. I think we need to enable scene lights. There we go. I'm going to enable scene world just so we can see what's going on better. Let's go with uh, 3,000. Make this bluish. Bear with me. That's a little better. Um, let's see. I want to go tighter. <clears throat> no? Maybe not. Uh, I think if we go with a smaller size. Definitely be more punchy. Sharper shadows, perhaps. I like how that's all raking. I like how that's being cut out. Um, let's do uh, one more. Let's copy that. 
paste. And this time, let's, uh, let's do some sort of top light, especially for the ship. Uh, I'm still getting the hang of this blender stuff. And uh, maybe we'll change the color to make it pop. The saturation, maybe. Make it stand out from the background, maybe warmer. I do like the warmer uh, color, actually. Um, and then let's see if we can reduce that cone. And I think we'll have to. Uh, Move this target let's see how do you do that select target I definitely don't like how it's casting the shadow uh you know casting the spotlight too much onto the environment so maybe just need to go much thinner with it. Yeah, that still works. Uh, let's save this out. I'm not liking that blue on the lattice. But who knows? It might be cool. So, I actually learned how to make a volume, uh, volumetric effect so let me just enable that and walk you guys through how how to get it done as well um so you start off by creating a cube object uh, so if you hit x cube add cube and you'll want to basically um define it as you know in 3d max it's your uh, atmosphere gizmo but you want to use that to define the space of how where the volume fog is kind of keep it uh, constricted uh, let's see. so that's one and then uh, go to shading and grab this volume Basically, you add a principal volume shader. <clears throat> Throw that into a mix so it's not just a solid color. Um, and you mix that with a volume scatter, which, uh, before we get to here, uh, basically you run, run a uh, world space noise texture to break up all that evenness. Uh, and you give it a little bit more punch contrast ratio here. Uh, to make the clouds, the smoky element, pop out more. And uh, you can use the slider to mix the two. Obviously, this is not a tutorial for that. I just wanted to show you guys what I did. Um, there's plenty of tutorials out there, and ultimately, I will make my own. Uh, but for now, let me kill that box. We just stick with the one we had. Please exit, for the love of God. And we're like stuck in this mode. Not that one, this one. Ah, how do we get out of here, man? Object mode. Delete. All right, let's go to that camera. Um, <clears throat> that's looking pretty cool. But it's pretty damn foggy. So if we go to a shader, let's uh, let's reduce that a bit, shall we? Is it the color? If we go darker. 
get less volume. Yeah. In this case, it is. Uh, it's a bit too heavy with the volume. If you know what I mean. Um, but those are the same vibes. Similar. I actually like those red lights even more. Uh, and I haven't done those LEDs yet. We'll see. Uh, let's bring some, some smoke back. And maybe what we need to do is is uh brighten that up even more. Make it really show up. Five thousand watts last away. Let's try one hundred fifty degrees. 20. It's nice and punchy. Too bright. 3500 watts. 2000 watts. See what we get. Way too heavy. But, you know, back and forth through this, this process for hours and hours. Um, I don't want to waste time delving all that in. So we'll just take the step back to where it was before I blasted that light. Okay. Um, where were we? I think somewhere here. Okay, I'm going to hit render, and then we'll see what we get. Control enter to render. And then, I don't like these uh, yellow LED ones. I mean, it's very minimal effort. Maybe try a maybe we'll try a blue color instead. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was an accident. No. Um but I really just don't like it, period. So we'll just switch this to uh, some of the metal. Let it fall back. And I think these red ones, I'm curious if we could get it to produce even more light. And I definitely don't like the blue ship. It's an okay effort to back call. Instead, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, <clears throat> let's hide the volume for a second. And uh, instead, let's add some sort of off screen lights. Light red. Man, I really don't like this. Um, when it creates a target light, make three. That's better. Might even be better with like an Omni type of light. We'll see. Definitely a little smaller in size. 
Let's jam it in here somewhere back here. And have it shoot up. Hide it. Let's go bluish. Definitely a lot dimmer. <clears throat> now it's bringing out the fact that we don't really have any textures. It's not helping. Maybe let's aim that low into the ground. Make it more rim. What are we doing? That's kind of cool out there. Uh, okay. And I know I promised those blue lights, but I'm not in the mood at this point. Um, is it the glass? Let's just see if we can do this. Transmission zero. Obviously, it would be better to get the softbox and all that. Like I said, this is taking way too long. Let's bring back that volume. Let me see. Yeah. All right. I'm going to hit enter. Let this cook. As this is rendering, um, like I said, this is my first tutorial. Uh, I'm realizing a lot of things uh, that are wrong with what I have done. But workflow wise, uh, you know, the gist of it is to start blocking some stuff out, get some walls, get some pillars, get some shapes going, um, and, and then then start to worry about the medium scale details, you know, uh, like the um, the panels on the walls and the tubes and whatnot, and then start worrying about the small scale details, you know, start focusing on that stuff, really cool stuff like brackets and bolts and, you know, connectors and whatnot. Um, that's generally the process uh, anybody takes really is just start big and then go small at the end. Um, that's how you should be adding detail so you don't waste too much time along the way. Um, and then, you know, especially for a scene where things are really dark, you might even just want to start blocking out the lighting just to get an idea of how much you really need to focus on certain areas. Um, so, yeah, so that's probably the biggest tip I could give you guys. As far as like the blender stuff, my modeling sucks in blend blender you know i just don't understand it i i just started but uh i was eager to mess around with it and i thought i'd share this uh, with anybody interested um because to be honest 
the the add-on that's called bs max has really helped me just like dive in and fool around as opposed to watching beginner videos on blender and where's what and what's what and you know hotkeys and this and that like that just sucks the life out of anybody learning a new software uh so i was really excited because i could use my you know hotkeys from 3d studio max and just move around in here and do some ninja stuff uh, what is this line over here? Oh, man. What's that all about? I was not getting that before, was I? Hmm. That is strange. Let's tumble around for a second. What could be producing that? Honestly, I don't see anything. I don't know why that's happening. Let's go back to the camera. Cancel this. Turn on this volume again. I should hit save. Um, control enter. Render. Maybe the problem just goes away. Okay. Now we have a line over there. Okay, I guess that's just how it does this whole rendering process. Um, maybe. I don't know, you can see down here, I mean, it's still at 0%, so possibly. It's giving me an estimate of 30 minutes. Oh, man, no. Like, 50 hours, which is not right, obviously. So I'll just let this cook, and then uh, we'll see what we get. Okay, so... Uh, I got this render back and I thought I'd change it. one or two things about it and I didn't want to waste your guys' time but basically I just added some blue lights over here, down here on the ground. Um, you know, reworked that light from the side. Um, tiny little things here and there. And this is the non fog version. So, uh, I graded a little bit just to wrap it up you know again yeah, this is just really having fun and learning the, the software myself um, all right let's check it out so grade camera down really like pumping that up over there i might even do a uh roto and do an individual adjustment to the fog here somewhere I don't have the weighted blur yet, so let's just do this one. 400 pixels. Let's see. That looks like just pumping it up. It's a little something. Obviously, there's so much you can do. You can break it up you know, with 2D smoke and whatnot. That's pretty cool. I just want to top it off with um, maybe a exponential glow. Let's see if I can get one of my plugins. Update glow. Expo glow. I don't know what the hell
It's all right. It's not bad. Let's don't do that. And I'll just bring down that mix amount. Looks like I don't have all the plugins I thought I had loaded. But, you know, uh, just a little something to go from here to here. Make it a little more punchy. Uh, yeah. That's it.